Hi, my name is Ken Gidge. This is Gidge World, and welcome to it. We have right sitting right beside me, we'll be talking with him in a moment, Michael Axton. I think I got it right. It's an interesting name. He's an interesting person. Running for one, two against Rick Dowd. Wow, this guy's got a lot of guts, but he's got a lot of character also. But first, before we get into that, I want to show you something. This is called 309. As most of you know, I am your state representative from Ward 6. And today we had business at the State House, and this is 309. And let me just read a little of this to you, because this is really important. This is from the Republicans. This, is, this bill is to repeal mandates insurance coverage for. Are you ready for this? The cost of testing for bone marrow donation. Do you realize today for the simple testing of bone marrow is no more than a suave? You would think an insurance company wouldn't mind that at all. You could do that right in the hospital. Uh, at the moment when, a, when a, a mother gives birth to a child or a child uh, when the child is mine. Really simple, not expensive at all. But the insurance companies, they don't want to pay for that. Uh, children's Early Intervention Therapy Services. Excuse me, this is at the very beginning of a child's life when a child is looked at by a doctor. They might have to go to a second doctor for a second opinion. Insurance companies don't want to pay for that. But guess what? If they find there's something wrong with your child at the very beginning, they can help your child, but they don't want to pay for that. Diagnosis and treatment for, are you ready for a disorder of autism? Excuse me? You don't think that people should find out within hours if their child has autism? Today, with everything that they have to assist parents with autism, guess what? It wouldn't cost that much money. And this one is really good down here. This one right here is persons having deafness and hearing loss. Well, I have been deaf in my right ear my whole entire life. And I stayed back in the first and the second grade because they thought I was a and I probably am. But last year, I fought for this one particular bill. And by the way, there are seven bills on one sheet, and all they want to do is repeal everything. But the bottom one I fought for because I have a hearing problem. So I went to the subcommittee. That means where everything takes place before it goes to the regular committee. It comes before us, and we vote on it. I went to the subcommittee. And you know what the subcommittee chairman told me? Oh, don't worry about this one. The insurance companies went to them and said, we're working on something. We've been working on something for a long time for hearing loss. Guess what it is they came up with? OK, every five years, $1,500. That's right, $1,500 every five years. That's not much money for a hearing aid, is it? And guess what? You know how much that would cost everyone uh, probably in this part of the world? Probably about five cents. Probably about $25 for all of this. But the Republicans are in power. And do you know what that means? That means they can do anything they want to. Oh. They can? Yes. The one sitting right beside me today got very upset at me today and said to the chairman, hey, we're Republicans. We run this place. Why do we have to listen to them? And I went, excuse me. It's called a democracy. I'm mad over this, and you ought to be mad over this, too. So I'll tell you what. This is going to come before the House. My suggestion to you is really simple. You go to the state website. You come to Hillsborough County. You come to Nashua, and you will find out exactly who your state representative is. And what you do is you call your state representative, and you ask them how they're going to vote on 309. And by the way, 309 is going to be cut up a little, maybe. maybe something will be added. Maybe something will be taken out. I don't know. But wait a minute, wait a minute. There was only three re Democrats today against, what, 15 Republicans. I'm not sure if we have that much of a chance. But my name is Ken Gage. I'm from Ward 6, and I'm going to fight. I want to fight. You want people to fight. You do not want 297 people beating up on 103 Democrats compared to 297 Republicans. I'm not going to put up with it. You should not put up with this. And by the way, this hearing thing, this is what the insurance companies wanted. They brought this before our committee. This is what we got. $1,500 every five years. Oh, maybe they moved it up to every three years. 
I'm not really sure because they're going to get rid of it. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know what's taking place up in Concord today. I'm a little upset, especially to that guy who says, we're Republicans, we run this, why do we have to listen to him? Excuse me, him? My name is Ken Gitch. I am the him. Anyone out there, including Republicans, shouldn't even put up with that. So, go to the state website, find out who your state representative is, and call him or her up and say, hey, what's going on up there? Can't you guys get along? My name is Ken Gidge. I'm going to take a short break, and we're going to come back with Mike Axe. 10. Is that correct? That's correct. I got it. After that, we'll be talking about all sorts of things, politics here in the city. See how he measures up to Rick Dowd. He is running for Ward Alderman of Ward 2. Ken Gidge, back in a moment. I'm sorry if I went off on you, but guess what? I don't like people who sort of disagree with, you know, the democratic process. Uh, the person is a free stater, by the way, and also uh, he clings to the Tea Party, and you get that combination together, it's not good for anyone. But I'll tell you what is good for everyone, and that is when we have a gentleman like Michael Axton sitting right beside me who is running for Ward 2, he is uh, challenging Rick Dowd, who's a very strong candidate, but Mike Axton will tell you why he's running. Why are you running? Well, a long time ago, it was a couple of years ago, I put my hat in. And the reason why I did, I read a Telegraph article about it was hardly any candidates running, and, uh, and they were encouraging people to run. And I was sitting at home, and I'm one of those guys that say, you know, let somebody else do it. You know, I can't be bothered. I don't want to get involved. So after a while of mulling it over, and if I didn't like the way things were running, I might as well put my hat in. So I did. And I wanted to let know uh, Mr. LaRose, I mean, a dedicated man. Uh, and I'd like to thank him for all his service to the community as well as the state representative. But it's being, you know, I wanted to do something for the community. I want to put my name in and say to the alderman that there are other people like me who are willing to run against even a seasoned veteran to make a difference. I think the uh, community probably needs change down at the uh, City Hall. Two years ago, it was almost like I'm flipping channel in time. It's, it's the same people over and over and over again are still there. Uh, I like to see more candidates run. I like to see more people getting involved. Um, this, this time around I put my hat in because I thought at the time nobody, nobody was running. So I threw my hat in again. Uh, one Tuesday I went down to get my petitions. Wednesday night I went out and I had them all signed. Thursday after work I w brought it down to City Hall. And uh, next thing I know I find out Mr. Dowd is running. Uh, he's another seasoned veteran. You know, he probably knows the ropes better than I can. Oh, he, he knows the ropes, but he's been there a long time, as you said. And, uh, and that's why, you know, I really applaud the other candidates for stepping up to the plate and getting involved because uh, that's their future. Uh, we, we need more people to run. We need more people to vote, you know. Uh, we have a lot of issues coming up. We have a lot of problems in Nashua. Uh, people see and read, the, especially, you know, they see the potholes. They see the crumbling sidewalks. Uh, they read of rape, murder, brawls. And it's happening more and more each day. Uh, you know, the Telegraph send me a questionnaire. Uh, is the 3% cut across the board, is it healthy or harmful? Uh, I That's across the board for the city. For the city. For the city, the, the mayor, uh, you know, three John Lee Lozer, who's not opposed, by the way. Right. And you, you have to sit down and, and, and you get mixed signals because 
on one breath you're saying, yes, it is, because of tough economic times. But on the other end, you're saying, the next day they're, they're spending a million dollars to take down a boiler house. Well, that million dollars could help the school. I mean, even though they're fully funded. Priorities. Priorities. Number one, everybody out there wants quality education for their child. Second, the police department. They're overworked. That's overtime. It's budgeted, you know, if they needed more. More police officers? I, I'd say, yeah. I, I, I strongly suggest we have more police. Are you, are you saying that the overtime, with the overtime, it would be less expensive probably having more police? Well, you could run lean and mean <clears throat> and pay overtime, uh, but you're running that, that policeman. You know, instead of 40 hours, you're running them 60 hours a week. Uh, would it be better to hire more police officers? Would it be better to have another police office? There's one on Panther Drive. Uh, I heard that at the uh, courthouse on Walnut Street, uh, the state is moving out. Wouldn't that be the perfect location for a second police station right in the heart of the problem? No, actually, it would be good for a rock and roll place called Barnaby's. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I hear what you're saying. They also have one down, why I said that, is they also have a little substation down on uh, Canal Street where I used to that, own a place called right, Barnaby's, and, to, and that's it, where we... We, you know, we knew each other. We knew long. each other. So they've, they've got a substation there. Yeah, it used to be a realtor. Uh, it's been one. everything. Ice cream. It's been, and ice cream. Hot dogs. Hot dogs and, and me. I used to have a place in there. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at the location. I mean, if, it's, if, if the state is giving it to the city for free, and, uh, which they probably will, you're getting a free building. You could put police officers right where the brawl was. And it's central. It's in the heart of the city. They could respond either direction. It makes, it makes sense. If you're getting a free building, why not staff it? Well, I think it might be used for other things, but, that, yeah, but, I mean, that, but is, that's your suggestion, and that's, that's what you believe. Well, well, the mayor was looking at uh, putting uh, offices in there for, you know, for the city hall, extra office space and everything else, which... It's good, but I'm just saying if that's the high crime area, you know, one of them, uh, why not have a police At station At least there? part of it could be a substation. Right, right. Okay. It, it could be an office. I'm not saying move the whole Panther drum. I'm saying keep two. You could have officers down there. You could patrol that area, and it'll, I think it would be better for the city. Uh, first, let, let's move back a little. Um, sure. You're from Ward 2. Where are the boundaries from Ward 2? Uh, it's from Cushing Ave, where St. Chris is, to the left-hand side of Manchester Street, going up Tinker Road, going Thornton, back down Am Amherst Street, all the way to the end of Amherst Street, and back to Cushing Ave. It's like a, okay. you know, so my ward is consisting of Amherst Street, and, uh, and it's... Anything on Amherst Street or your ward that needs to get done that's not done? Well, the state, that's a state road, and uh, so the paving and everything else should be taken by the state. Uh, we have good news that we have Dartmouth-Hitchcock that's uh, going to Southwood uh, Drive. They'll be closing the two, uh, on one on Main Street, East Hollis, and the other one on West Hollis, and combining everything on uh, Ward 2. Good. Yeah, it good should, be open, two. should be open by the end of January. I understand they're also expanding the highway down there? To three lanes? I mean, at your Amherst Street? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's been postponed and off and on because you have to really talk to the owners of, of winding it and see how they want it. Right now it goes three, then it goes back to two. I mean, it's, it's kind of a weird setup right now. So we'll see what happens, but that's basically the state. I don't think the city... I mean, we could, on behalf of the owners, I suppose, we could intervene. And, well, I'll, I'll make know. a suggestion, and as, as you know, uh, I am a state representative from Ward 6, but when it comes to anything in the state, sometimes I can be helpful. A lot of people can be helpful. Uh, I think it, whatever they do down there, they have to have a walkover. They have oh, to, they need, definitely. they need probably two they walkovers. I understand that would be state, so... If you're elected or not, please keep this 
under the light here because if we have two walkovers where people can get from one side of the yep. street to the other exactly. side, people have been killed there. Exactly. They're trying to, you know, from the, the condos, uh, trying to cross the street, and it's really dangerous. A walkover would be safe, just like Penichuk Junior High School for the kids. A walkover would be an excellent idea. And uh, if you're at the state, I'll be contacting you if I'm elected. Uh, if not, maybe Mr. Dunn. Elected or not, I right. think uh, any, anybody out there who uh, travels Amherst Street and you know that uh, or hear that it is going to be uh, rebuilt, I suggest you contact your state representative or myself or all of us and say, hey, there have been people killed out there. So what we got is maybe a couple walkovers. That means they can walk up and over the highway instead of trying to cross it. Because guess what? That part of the world is getting fast. It, it, it is. I mean, the speed limit is uh, 30 miles, but then it goes to 40. But uh, it's no hope. I do 30 out of my it, driveway. I mean, if you, yeah. if, 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 talking about policemen, if you hired probably two policemen, I'm, I'm sure within four months' time that pays their salary, and, and, the, I, I, and the rest of the months are free. Yeah. I, you know? Yes. That's how bad it's getting. It's, yeah, that, it's, that, is, that, is, that is pretty bad. All right, so that's, that's your ward. So, you know, we know, I think that's coming up. Anything else in your ward that upsets you? Is there are particular crimes or are there particular uh, parts of your ward that needs uh, assistance? <clears throat> well, you know, this crime's all over, and... Uh, you know, that's why I say it's probably a good idea to have a couple of police stations. Uh, another one is uh, fire. It's, uh, we have Amherst Street to protect us. Uh, that was a long time ago, I don't know, probably eight, ten years, I can't remember. But they made it a park it was next to the Votech. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're financially healthy right now. Uh, for the most part, well, uh, next year I, I have. Yeah. I, I'm, there's a big question mark well, if, for everybody. If there's a cut three you know. percent across, uh, if we're healthy or not, we don't think we are. We're, yeah, I don't think it's, it'd probably be built, but hopefully someday it will. Uh, well, the, it would be a good location. I mean, right now yes. Merrimack helps us. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, that's correct. Yeah, and uh, you know, we should really think before we build and say, well, we should have put the fireplace in, I well, mean, a fire station uh, in. I don't, I don't know if you're a Republican or a Democrat. I don't want to know right okay. now, but I'll <laughs> tell you, uh, the president, Barack Obama, is trying to get, I think it's $30 billion to get the police, firemen, uh, and teachers back to work. And uh, you may not like the president or not, but guess what? We're talking about crime right here, and hey, it is in Nashua. Also, there, we, I've heard it talk about putting a, another fire station up there. And uh, while they're at it, we get a little money. Maybe we can put a couple of walkovers. Uh, exactly. Uh, you know, make, make it a lot safer for everybody. And, and, and that's primarily the goal of, of uh, being an alderman, to say, what's our priorities? School, number one. Protection. The fi you know, protection is police and the fire. And that's, that's the key to a city, especially education. Well, I'm, I'm reading a book right now called Boomerang, and this has to do with uh, the, the economy of the world. I think everybody should pick it up. It's called Boomerang. And uh, it's quite fascinating what's going to be taking place in the next six months with other countries faltering. Uh, here on uh, Wall Street, as, as you know, there's, there's a big hellabaloo. Right. And uh, earlier on, I was talking about 309. This is insurance, okay? I'm in insurance and banking, commerce. And uh, when I look at this and I see the insurance going up, et cetera, guess what? They play Wall Street the game and their losses. We kind of pay for their losses. Yeah, yeah, we do. I so, mean, and their losses means that if we got to pay more, we lose firemen. We lose policemen. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I pay um, on my health insurance. You know, copay, and I'm sure the police, uh, the fire, and and the teachers do too. And oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. you know, we've, that's the that's a sign of the time. That's that's commonplace now to copay on any business. Right. Uh, Rick Dowd has been an old old friend of mine, and he's been doing a lot. But you also have been an old friend. Actually, we're talking about Barnaby's earlier, which was a nightclub in the city of Nashua. Right, right. Uh, I, like I say, I'm a Nashua native. Uh, 
Uh, I went to Mount Pleasant, Spring Street, Nashua High, Elm Street, uh, Daniel Webster College. I worked at Janot's Markets when I turned 16 till 30. You worked uh, at 16 to 30? Uh, 14, were, 14 years. Gertrude? Does anyone Gertrude. remember Gertrude? I had a fight with her to bring her home. She what? Walk, she walked two miles every day, every day to go home. I used to fight with her to get her in the car to go home, take her home. Wow. Yeah, she's a strong woman. Yes, you know? yes. So, you know. Uh, Rick Dowd uh, has been in a lot of things, uh, the school board, et cetera. Do you have any complaints about Rick? Uh, you know, it, two, year, two years ago, I mean, I'm sure my voters in Ward 2 or would know about the school department two years ago, about, you know, the shortfalls, the uh, bringing up, a, you know, somebody from Texas, but... Earl? Yeah, Julia. Okay. Um, but, you know, I really didn't want to get into that. It's like, I, I'm sure the voters would know all about the, what happened and, and, and come to the conclusion of who to vote for on, on the election day. Uh, like I said, he's a seasoned veteran. He's 27 and a half years. I mean, I got to give that guy credit for just being there, you know, and I do. Same way with uh, Mr. LaRose, uh, Alderman LaRose, you know. They served a lot of time to help a lot of people. And that's, yes. And that's all I got to say. Yes. You know, I don't want to be, you know, let, let the voters decide. Uh, well, I think it would be the best. You know? uh, we, we talked off camera before, and I, I did want to give you a little bit of credit. One of the things were that there are a lot of people who are unopposed, and that's one of the main reasons. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it's really... You know, I wish other people would really step up to the plate because, you know, Nashua needs a choice. They need somebody to down down there saying, you know, I am for the police department. I am for the fire department. I want to have safe streets. I don't want crumbling sidewalks. I don't want roads or potholes everywhere. I want to get the public works moving. I want more policemen so we can be safe. And someday we will get that fire station up north end. I mean, it's nice to have Merrimack bail us out, but we should return the favor. We're Nashua. Um, as you probably know, they're changing the cost of parking down on Main Street. How do you take that? I seldom, to be honest with you, I seldom go to Main Street. I went. You told them to go where? You told I, them to go to Main Street? No, I, Did you I, miss something I, I, in between? No, there? I seldom go to Main Street, and this is the reason why. I, I go to work, I get out at three, uh, I go home, uh, and, and that, you know, pretty much that's my day. Uh, I go to Amherst Street. Okay, so okay, I mean, parking it, doesn't it, affect you. How do you think it'll affect you? Well, it, it did at one time. Okay. I, I went, I found this, uh, and, and this is a good site to to go to. It's uh, www.visualizenashua.com and they have a lot of good ideas. They have a, the next monthly meeting is on 88 Main Street at, uh, let me see, I think it's 630, but you could go on their website. 88 find Main out. Street, okay. And they give that website again? It's uh, www <coughs> www.visualizenashua.com. And do you have a website or uh, an email I, address? Or? I, I don't have a, a website, but, uh, you know, uh, it's really an interesting, th they were talking last time about the Bridge Street project. Yes. And I think they will, on no end of November or December, probably go ahead and do that. No, it's, that is? It, it's right, uh, well, Canal Street, across the tracks, it, I mean, uh, across that intersection is Bridge Street, heading towards Hudson Bridge. Everything to the left should be developed. Uh, the warehouses, I think they plan on save, keeping them, but they don't put uh, high-rises up there. Okay. You're, are you talking about where John Mansville? Right. Okay. That's a beautiful area. It, it is, and that's why yeah. they selected it. You know, when, it, when they were talking about uh, building in Nashville, I, I didn't, you know, quite know where they were building, so I just wanted to go find out. 
and talking about parking on Main Street. Well, Main Street, I, you can't find a parking spot on the main drag. You know, I, it's maybe I was too early, too late, or whatever, but I couldn't find one. So I ended up parking in back of National Trust Building. So I'm looking around, I'm looking around, you know, I see meters, but everybody, everybody's there. So I see unmetered, I'm like, oh, it looks like it belongs to somebody. So then I found a visitor's parking, so I parked there. You're a visitor. <laughs> I'm okay. visiting. Uh, I walked up there, and it's really an interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, the next meeting is November 2nd. I believe it's at 6.30 or 6, but uh, check the website, and they're also on Facebook, Visualize Nashua. It's, uh, it's really interesting to go to. Believe it or not, we only have a couple minutes left. Okay, I'm uh, sorry. No, 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 no. This is, this is your time. You okay. can say whatever you want. Uh, uh, Penacheck Waterworks, buy, not buy, upset? Uh, I work there. I no, no comment. Uh, you work uh, there? I work there. Oh, I see. <laughs> I want to talk about the Broad Street Parkway. Okay. Well, what do you think about the Broad Street Parkway? <laughs> <laughs> to me personally, I, I would have connected the two high schools. With a, and that would have been probably, you know, I'm, I'm not really sold on the parkway until it's finished. I know it's, we're going to do it, but, you know, I, I think connecting the two high schools would have been a lot better. I still think they can do that. But you mean I, putting, I, I, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I think they could, but I think they could have yeah. did that first. They, they could have said, you know what, Let, let's connect the high schools together. I think some of the kids travel from Nashua North, well, at least my, my son did. They put him on the bus and then they bring him back down on the highway to Nashua South for some course that he took. I said, they do that? Yeah. So then they get back on the fourth on the bus, going back and forth on the highway for these kids. I'm saying, well, it doesn't make any sense. If I had a bridge, if they built a bridge and put it there, it would be a lot safer back and forth. I think, you know? I think time and it. We've got about one more minute. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let Mike have the last words, but before that, I would just like to mention that any candidate out there who has not been on Gidge World, you're welcome to get on. I've been calling a number of you and uh, answering machines, etc. You may not want to come on. Maybe you do want to come on. But you can get in touch with me at 864-9332. That's 864-9332. I also have a website called Gidge World, which is an art website. And believe it or not, they're putting on an art show for me. I'll talk more about that probably at another time. That's Gidge World. Also, email address, which is K-G-D-G-E, K-I-D-K-Gidge dot com. Uh, you also can uh, get me there, leave a message there. Also, Facebook, befriend me. Let's be friends. Michael, you got the last couple of minutes. Anything you want to say? Uh, I just want to say that if, if I'm elected, uh, I will hold, you know, War II meetings. Uh, we never had one. Uh, so I think it would be a good time to start. And I, and I would ask of Public Works, uh, and, well, I would uh, ask Public Work officials to be there as well as a police representative. So, you know, at least our ward could know, hey, what are we doing with these roads? What, how safe are we? You know, ask, ask the questions and get the answers. Uh, I will return your phone calls. Uh, Give a telephone number. 882-5574. And I'm on Facebook, so you can friend me. And uh, I'm really interested in public service, not public office. Good, I like that. Spell your last name. A-K-S-T-E-N. And that's Michael. Michael. Ward 2. Ward 2. This is Ken Gidge. Mike, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and one thing I like about Mike, we have talked uh, uh, before, and that is that he's a believer that more people should run. Mike got into it thinking that nobody was going to run. Uh, Rick Dowd is running, so it should be quite interesting, but I'm sure... Uh, everyone might agree that if you win or you lose, uh, you at least should have someone else running against you. Michael, again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is Ken Gidge, and this has been Gidge World. Welcome to it, and I'll see you next time.